Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quadratic equation with complex numbers. I'll be presenting two methods even though some people are probably going to say those are the same methods. Anyways, we'll talk about it. So we have z squared plus 6z equals 40i and we're going to solve for z because i is a constant. In case you didn't know, i is a number whose square equals negative 1, or you can define it as one of the square roots of negative 1, right? If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a playlist. All right, great. So how do we solve this problem in two different ways? Sort of. First method. So I'm going to go ahead and put everything on the same side. Let's go ahead and do it. That'll give us a full quadratic. And then we can use the quadratic formula, right? There's something called the quadratic formula. Quadratic equations are easy to solve. Cubics are not that easy. Co cortex, well, it depends. Not that complicated, but trying to solve cortex gives you a cubic. So you kind of have to reduce the power. But unfortunately, quintix cannot be solved. There's no quintic formula. Really sad, right? Anyway, so to solve this problem, we'll use the quadratic formula. And that'll be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Minus is going to turn into a plus, and we're going to get 160i because a is 1. And all of that is divided by 2a, which is 2. Awesome. Now we can go ahead and simplify this, can we? We need to square root a complex number, so that's going to be fun. But let's go ahead and take out something first. I can take out a 9, can't I? Well, actually not 9. I meant 6. Wait a minute. Is 6 a common factor? 36 and 160. Okay, I need to find a perfect square. I think in this case, 9 probably wouldn't work, but 4 would work. So if I can take out a 4, that would be nice. And that actually gives me 4 times 9 plus, that's where the 9 comes from, okay, I'm thinking. So if you take out the square root of 4, that'll be 2. So we'll have a 2 here times the square root of 40, I mean 9 plus 40i. That should be familiar to you. That's in the problem, right? Divided by 2. And if you divide everything by 2, z will be negative 3 plus minus the square root of 9 plus 40i. Yes, it kind of turns out to be the same thing. That's where it comes from. When I show you the second method, you're going to realize, yes, these methods are very much related. But they're not entirely the same, even though one of them can be used uh, to prove the other. Anyways, so the critical part for this solution is finding the square root of 9 plus 40i, or should I say the square roots of, because any complex number has two square roots, except for zero. Zero is the only exception. Such a crazy complex number. So how do you find the square root of 9 plus 40i? Well, the square root of a complex number is also a complex number, because if you square a complex number, you get a complex number. It kind of works both ways. So let's go ahead and call this a plus bi, and then we want to go ahead and multiply both sides, I mean by itself, or square both sides, that's what I meant. And from here, let me go ahead and write this on the left-hand side. If you square a plus bi, you're going to get a squared minus b squared from b squared i squared, because i squared is equal to negative 1, plus 2abi. Uh-oh. This is happening sometimes with the static electricity or something. I don't know. Yes, notability, is, or the pen is tired, maybe. 2abi, and then... On the right-hand side, we should get 9 plus 40i, right? Because we're squaring this expression right here. Great. So from here, by comparing these two numbers, we arrive at the following result, okay? And that would be the comparing the real parts and real parts and imaginary parts to imaginary parts, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. This should be 9, and this should be 40, which means a squared minus b squared is equal to 9, and AB is equal to, come on, 20. Now, where do we go from here? We can go um, different ways. For example, we can isolate A squared from here, which is B squared plus 9. And then you can square both sides here. 
and that will give us 400 and then we can substitute this replace a squared with b squared plus 9 so we have b squared times b squared plus 9 equals 400 and then think about two numbers that are 9 apart don't worry about the squares uh, it's this should be easy to guess if we have a nice result right so think about uh, ways of factoring 400 so that they, their factors are 20 and 20 is not going to do obviously but they should be 9 apart so let's go ahead and take a look 20 times 20 is going to work but not for our case and then we can kind of de increase one of these and decrease the other one right for example we could go to 40 times 10 or maybe we should be in between because notice that the difference is 30 right now which is huge so maybe we can do the following uh, kind of separate this into prime factors how about this 20 can be written as 2 squared 5 if you square that you're gonna get 2 to the fourth times 5 squared so from here can I just take two numbers um, that are 9 apart or let's forget about it this is gonna probably be complicated let's just replace b squared with c and then we'll get c times c plus 9 equals 400 and this requires the solution of another quadratic which we can hopefully solve it turns out to be the same but this time we have a formula which gives us negative b plus minus the square root of b squared which is 81 minus 4ac and that would be 1600 right okay this hopefully shouldn't be too hard to guess uh, how, what is the square root of 1681, right? I'm guessing it is 41 squared. Did I get that right? Hopefully. Because that would basically be uh, reasonable to assume, right? Because between 40 and 45, uh, it, it's pretty close to 40 squared. Anyways, that gives us negative 9 plus minus... By the way, this is a real number, 41 divided by 2, and that's a C. C has two values. One of them is going to be negative 50 divided by 2, which is negative 25. The other one is just going to be 32 divided by 2, which is 16. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. Does C have to be real? Yes, because B is real, and B squared is supposed to be a positive number. Make sense? So I'm going to go with 25, I mean 16. <laughs> Where does 25 come from? So b squared equals 16, and from here b is equal to 4, or b is equal to negative 4. And of course, we have a solution for a from here as well, because remember, a b is equal to 20. So if b is 4, then a is negative positive 5, and if b is negative 4, a should be negative 5, because their product has to be 20, right? Okay. Does this also satisfy the other equation? Well, it should. Let's go ahead and find out. Now, we should have z equals 5 plus 4i, and then negative 5 minus 4i. But of course, this is just the square root of the number, so we kind of need to write the whole thing. So z was equal to what? This. Okay, right? So from here, we get negative 3 plus minus. The plus minus is actually taking care of this, but we can still use it. We have 5 plus po 5 plus 4i so let's go ahead and write it down let me clear this area so i can kind of use it to write my answer okay cool now we're going to go ahead and simplify this in two ways negative 3 plus 5 plus 4i which is going to give us 2 plus 4i that's one of the solutions for z so let's call it z sub 1 and z sub 2 is going to be negative 3 minus 5 minus 4i and that should be negative 8 minus 4i so there are two solutions their imaginary parts are opposites they're not conjugates they're just that way <laughs> okay let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick second method again is very similar to the first because it kind of uses the same idea but in a different um, with a different flavor okay cool let's see how we can do this now i'm going to go ahead and write my expression one more time and this time I'm going to go ahead and complete the square because completing the square is basically quadratic formula, right? So I'm going to add 9 to both sides because half of 6 squared. And then this gives me z plus 3 squared equals 9 plus 40i. What is the square root of 9 plus 40i? Come on, you know that. 5 plus 4i. At least it's one of them. So z plus 3 from here is going to be plus minus 5 plus 4i. And then when you subtract 3 from both sides, it's basically going to be 
the exact same thing but again we use a different idea hopefully and this brings us to the end of the studio thank for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye